Hello and welcome. I'm here today to explain to you the new project that we've got in Design and Technology. It's called Client Collector and I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes explaining the idea behind the project and what it means for you going through it. Okay, so thus far in technology, you've been designing products and things for yourself based on things that you want or you need and maybe centered around your own interests and hobbies. Okay, and that's fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You can design things that you like, of course. However, in the real world, designers design for clients. And designers might not always have the same ideas or interests as their clients, but they still have to make a product that they would appreciate. Okay, so this project is centered around you designing for other people. Now, this project will run from your first lesson, which is today, probably up to Easter. Okay, so it's gonna it's going it's gonna go on for quite a while, but there'll be lots of different parts to it. Okay, so you're gonna be um, assigned lots of different design tasks. They'll all be different. You'll ask you'll be asked to do different things each time, but the key thing is that every new task you do will be centered around a different client. Okay, so you might be designing for an old woman one day. You might be des designing for a man in a wheelchair the next day. It's going to change every single design task. Now, the project's called Client Collectors because once you've designed for that client and that client is satisfied, you'll receive their badge. Okay, so once you've completed the design challenge, you'll earn the client's badge and these can be stuck into your booklet. This will help you keep track of all the clients that you've designed for. And it's also good for your teacher to know which design tasks that you've completed. OK, so the aim of the game is to, to collect as many different clients as you can. And then that will help you build up your client page within your booklet. Now, you can earn bonus clients as well by uh, completing extension activities. OK, I'll give you some extra ones there. So this is what your booklet will look like, more or less. You've got space at the front for all your different badges you'll collect. And once you start to earn them, it will start to fill up a bit, okay? So your clients will be all different sort of people. It might not be these people, but these are just examples that are here. You might have some bonus ones as well. So the more you collect, the better. You wanna design for as many different people, doing as many different design tasks as you can, okay? Looking forward to seeing what everyone comes up with. Hello. And welcome to your first lesson of client collectors. So for this lesson, there is a drawing element. So you're going to need some blank paper or some plain paper of any color that you can draw on. White is preferable, but whatever paper you've got is absolutely fine. Okay, for the first section, I just want you to take just a minute, maybe 30 seconds to a minute, and just to think about who or what do you think a client is? Okay, so we should have a couple of ideas written down about who or what you think a client is. Okay, so a client is someone who pays someone for goods, services, or a product. So if you're designing something for someone, they are your client, especially if there's money exchanged. Okay, that means you're providing a service. If you're making someone for one specific person, we call them a client. And if you're making something for a group of people, we call them a target market. Now, a target market, you're designing one product that's suitable for multiple people. If you're designing for one person, it's a bespoke product, and we call that that's designing for a client. Okay. Now, in order to get the best product for your client, you need to do a little bit of research. So this is gathering information about your client, and we can use that in the design. So before we can design a product for a client, we need to find out a little bit about them. The information is used to make sure the client gets a product that is suited to them. Designers can gather information in many forms, but one form that's particularly useful is an interview. OK, so for this task, you're going to have to be a little bit creative here because usually we'd be in, in school and be able to talk to each other. OK, but for the first task, we're just going to create a mind map for a potential client. Now, we're not going to design anything for this client. What we're practicing here is how to gather the information. OK, so just thinking about someone, you know, or if there's someone in the house that can help you with this task, that could be useful, too. 
you're going to spend a couple of minutes, let's say five minutes, just finding out as much information about them as possible. And then we're going to collate it in the form of a mind map. OK, so we've got a couple of questions at the side here, things that you might ask them, maybe how old they are, their name, where they live, who they live with, maybe things that they do in their spare time, their hobbies and interests or anything else that you can think of. You can be creative as you want, but you find out that information about that client. OK. So now that we've gathered the information about our client, we need to put it somewhere so it's easy to look at and it's useful to use. And that's what we get a client profile. OK, so a designer will often use a client profile to summarize key pieces of information that will be used when designing the product. So a client profile will usually include the following. So these are all things that you've probably included in your mind map already. So it could be background information about them, their job, what they do. And they often include photographs of the client or photographs of styles they like or clothes they like to wear. Could even be some information about hobbies or interests that they do outside of work or school. And then more generic things such as their age or their gender. OK, so this is this is an image of a blank client profile. OK, so up in the top left, you might have a picture of your client and then the list down the sides here, these are all kind of facts that you can find out about your client and it puts them in a nice, neat order where you've got that information right in front of you and easy to access. So for our first client, for your client collector project, we're going to be looking at someone that we're all familiar with. So we all know Queen Elizabeth or Lizzie, as we know her. So in this task, you're going to analyze the following information about your first client. We'll read through the information below together and select out the key information and then we're going to fill in our first client profile. Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor, also known as the Queen, was born on the 21st of April 1926 in Mayfair, London. She was the first child of the Duke and Duchess of York. She currently lives in Buckingham Palace in London. She, she has many responsibilities as the head of state and when not occupied with royal duties, Lizzie can often be found driving around the royal estate in her Bent Bentley State limousine or Range Rover. The Queen is the only person under British law that can drive around without a license. Elizabeth shares similar hobbies with her spouse, Prince Philip. These include horse riding, pigeon racing and watching football. Despite what you might think, the Queen loves nothing more than a trip to Wagamama's followed by a night of Scrabble and slow dancing. When not out and about with Prince Philip, she can be found in her bubble bath reading Sporting Life and The Racing Post. The Queen is off also a gifted singer. She enjoys singing hymns, show tunes and listening to tracks by Gary Barlow while decorating her Christmas tree. So on the next slide, you're going to find an activity um, that will have you read through this information just once more and fill in the gaps. So now that we've read our information about the Queen, it's your task now to fill in her client profile. So on your Google Classroom, you'll find this template. It's already got the pictures filled in for you, so that's fine. Your job is to click through the sections and fill them in as you find out the information. So for example, we know her name's Elizabeth something Windsor. The information's there for you to put in there. And then you can go through like other names. What else is she known as? How do we commonly refer to Elizabeth Windsor? And then her age, her status. So is she married? Is she divorced? Is she single? Her job, what does she do? What kind of car does she use? What does she like reading? Favorite music, favorite place to go eat out at the restaurant? And what does she do at nighttime? Does she have any hobbies? And maybe some other information um, about her. And once you've um, finished this, you can submit it, hand it in online on your Google Classroom. And then if you go back to the YouTube video, then you'll be able to see the next section of the task for today. Design task. The Queen is throwing a baking theme party at the palace. You've been asked to design a throne for the photo booth. She would like you to draw inspiration from her favorite sweet treats. Okay. So the queen's throwing a party and she needs you to design the chair for the photo booth. Now, 
here's a mood board for some of her favorite sweet treats. Now, what you've got to do is you've got to take inspiration from these images, whether it be the colors, whether it be the shapes, whether it be the subject of it, okay? If you want to make some kind of cupcake into a chair or the donut, inspiration from the images, that's up to you. So here's some, some images, a collection, a mood board of thrones that have been used as photo booths or some famous chairs, okay? So they're all very imaginative. They're all very different. Now, here's an example of a photo booth throne that's been made inspired by the cake mood board. So you can clearly see where they've got the inspiration from. So the backs resembling the shapes of the cupcakes. We've got the Battenberg pillow there. The actual legs of the chair is a cake stand. Okay, so we didn't just get to this drawing just like that, just straight away. We can start off with the simple sketch. Okay. And then we add the colour. And then we can go into enhancing your drawing with a bit of shading. And then once we get to that stage, we can think about labelling our work, or annotating our work. So that's explaining what we've done and why we've made those decisions. Okay. So the back of the chair has been inspired by the shape of the icing on a cupcake. That's okay, but we make it better by adding a little bit more detail. The soft edges of the shape will make the cushioned back very comfortable to use. Now you think it may not have to be that comfortable if it's just for a photo, but the queen, she's an older woman, as we found out in the client profile. So it's important that we take her into consideration when we're designing. If you finish designing that and you want to push yourself or challenge yourself a bit further, you can always look at drawing your throne in isometric. I'm sure most of you have looked at isometric drawings before. You're drawing them from the 30 degree angle. Okay, we'll leave that mood board up there for you to get started with. 